Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of the Your Body Has Your Back podcast. We are diving in today to the topic of advocating for your health and walking the line between functional and conventional medicine. Each of you, our listeners, are here for a reason. Some of you might be questioning the status quo health guidance that you're receiving, or maybe an intuitive sense that there is a more holistic way that you can address your health or symptoms. And many may be feeling that there is more to what is going on to your health than what your current providers are sharing with you, or maybe even what your current providers understand about your health. You're here because you're seeking out healthcare providers who feel more like a team, working with you to be curious about the why behind your symptoms, and to have the knowledge and expertise to utilize more holistic tools of nutrition, lifestyle, maybe targeted supplements to support health, heal your symptoms, and build a sustainable life for yourself and those around you. So last season, we shared with you our approach to the fundamentals and how impactful having those big rocks in place are to overall health and healing. We also shared some of our challenges with the lack of focus on fundamentals and the individual in both conventional medicine and even in some examples of functional medicine. So both areas of medicine have their strengths and they both have their challenges. So today we wanted to dive into more about talking about the differences between conventional and functional medicine, really without creating this, this versus that mentality. So our goal is really to highlight where there's room for both and how each type of medicine has a place that we as our own healthcare advocates can better navigate when one is more of a fit for our needs than the other. So Jill is going to kind of jump in to highlight the need for us to be doing things different because it's it's pretty rough out there. <laughs> it It is rough out there. And I think, you know, before diving deeper into this discussion and yeah, talking about uh, functional medicine, conventional medicine, um, I just think it's important to um, highlight some of the big problems or gaps in our healthcare system that we're seeing and just that really significant need, as Abby said, to do things differently. I also want to um, discuss specifically what Abby and I are actually seeing in practice, um, you know, when we're in the weeds, in the trenches with clients day to day. Um, but I want to start off by sharing a few statistics that I think are really profound to kind of um, kick things off here. So, um, Women's health conditions. So I want to start with the women's health conditions um, because in general, these are very, very under-supported, under-researched in our society as a whole. Um, but to put it into perspective, on average, women with endometriosis will suffer with symptoms for 10 years, 10 years before receiving a diagnosis. These are all statistics pulled from um, research and, and big organizations um, that have looked at um, you know, these stats with, with different conditions, uh, just so you're aware. So um, 10 years before receiving a diagnosis. Um, for PCOS specifically, in one of the largest studies done on PCOS diagnosis, diagnosis experiences, women with PCOS on average reported that it took over two years and seeing three different healthcare providers to achieve a diagnosis. It's also estimated that 50% of women remain unaware or undiagnosed that have PCOS, 50%. And in that same large study that I mentioned, only 15% of women reported being satisfied with the information they received about PCOS when they were diagnosed. 15% of women were satisfied in one of the largest, uh, you know, kind of worldwide surveys, which is really honestly pathetic in, in our opinion. Current yep. research estimates that 30 million Americans have hypothyroidism and 90% of those patients are women. It's estimated that one in eight women will develop thyroid disease at some point during her lifetime. IBS or irritable bowel syndrome specifically affects 25 to 45 million uh, people in the United States. And about two in three IBS sufferers are women. They are female. A um, couple other examples here. Primary dysmenorrhea or painful periods, um, one of the leading causes of absenteeism from school and work for women. 60% of U.S. adults suffer from at least one, at least one chronic disease. Chronic uh, disease being a disease that is diet and lifestyle driven. So 
pretty crazy. I, I mean, those statistics, you know, obviously we're uh, aware of these with the work that we do, but even just kind of pulling some of these for this podcast, I was like, man, this is a big deal. I mean, this is, you know, when we say like, it's rough out there, like many of the people that are actually the, you know, the humans and the faces behind these statistics are seeking out help from their healthcare providers. And they're still in these statistics. I mean, the one that really like that 15% were unsatisfied with the, or, or only 15% were satisfied with the information. Like we know why these things happen in the body. We know a lot about them. Like why, what is the barrier? And this is kind of what we're talking about today. Like what is the barrier to getting the information into, you know, to these people who, who really need it and the information of like what they can do tomorrow to start to lay the, the foundations to really put their health in a better order than, than, what, it, than what it is, you know, currently. Exactly. And, you know, not, not only are um, people getting sicker and, you know, chronic conditions are so much more common. And even if there isn't an actual condition associated with it, people are suf- suffering with more and more symptoms that are impacting their day to day life. And that is, isn't even diving into the piece of like, you know, the lack of support, uh, you know, when people are seeking out, you know, care and support and help from their healthcare providers. But, um, you know, really profound statistics in terms of uh, just, yeah, highlighting the need, uh, the need to do things differently because we feel strongly that um, people should not be suffering in the way that they are currently. So really, really eye-opening um, just, you know, the symptoms, how sick our population is becoming as a whole. In practice, Abby and I are working with clients that have often been struggling with chronic gut and hormone symptoms for years and years. And the biggest problem and frustration that we have is that, you know, people are seeking out that help, but they are um, often only given support that is focused on symptom management or symptom suppression. No one is asking the question why. Why is this individual experiencing these symptoms? Why are they experiencing them now? What's going on in their, you know, their life, their diet, all the things, which we'll dive into more in a minute. Um, If you have endometriosis or PCOS, as an example, you are told to take birth control to shut off hormone production and often, you know, sent on your way with very little uh, information beyond that. If you're struggling with thyroid issues, you're told to sit and wait and deal with the symptoms until things progress to a point where there is a full-blown disease state with the thyroid itself, Um, you know, requiring medication when there could have been an opportunity for early action and to kind of reverse those those thyroid dynamics. Um, If you struggle with constipation, you're told to take Miralax or maybe drink water and eat more fiber. Oh my gosh. Um, My favorite. On that one. (laughs) Yeah, right. Um, so ultimately, um, people's healths are kind of being treated like one big game of whack-a-mole. This symptom pops up, here's this medication to kind of slap on the symptom, and then, oop, this other symptom pops up, so we're going to use another medication and suppress it here. Um, and it's uh, a really frustrating experience when you're kind of in, in that vicious cycle and struggling. And we are absolutely not here to bash conventional medicine. We are absolutely not here to say that medications are bad or there is not, um, you know, a time and place for those. Medications can be helpful and sometimes very, a uh, very necessary piece of a treatment plan. But what we are seeing is that people are being told that medication is their only option. And a lot of times in the work that we do, we are actually able to completely negate the need for these medications through diet, lifestyle, smart supplementation, which is really incredible. So we want to have a conversation today about the differences between conventional um, and functional medicine and to give you our, you know, thoughts on what we are seeing here and where we feel things need to shift in order for people to actually get the support they deserve and to get healthy at the end of the day so they can, you know, show up fully in their life. So Abby's going to take it away and kind of dive into talking more about um, conventional medicine specifically. Yeah. So conventional medicine, and I I think it's interesting to start here, of the idea that conventional medicine was created from a necessity when the greatest threat to human health was infectious disease. So fast forward to 21st century world, now the greatest threat to human health is inflammation and metabolic conditions driven by lifestyle and nutrition. So we are in a very different world today. 
conventional medicine serves a need. It just doesn't serve every need in our modern day world. And it's really important that we can recognize both its strengths and its weaknesses. So, you know, for starters, it takes 17 years on average for new research to be integrated into guidelines used in major healthcare facilities. 17 years is a very long time. So this delay of research and protocols being integrated into conventional medicine, it's meant to protect from making changes until they've been you know, deeply supported in research. But this massive delay, unfortunately, works against so many of the new discoveries and developments that have really come to light in the past decade. Most specifically, the massive impact of nutrition and lifestyle interventions on so many health conditions. So I've worked with clients in my practice who come to me struggling with, let's say, like IBD, which is irritable bowel disease like Crohn's, which is an autoimmune condition that impacts the gut. And having been told by their doctor, who, mind you, you know, is very high up in a prestigious healthcare um, establishment, you know, here in Boston, that diet and lifestyle have no impact in irritable bowel disease. And unfortunately... I, and I know Jill is in the same position, we've heard this type of story from so many clients across the board, in particular regarding autoimmune conditions in general. And this is just flat out wrong. And quite frankly, at a certain point, it's just bad medicine. And this is really where the limitations in conventional medicine and the, the delay of getting you know, more real time research and, and information into the way that our healthcare system is built is really putting us, the individual, at a loss. And I know, Jillian, in your practice, I mean, you've had so many experiences like this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's, I would say it's honestly more the norm uh, than, than not, which is, is really sad and, and frustrating. To give you an example of a conversation I had with a potential client recently on an introductory call, um, this individual reached out struggling with a lot of. Uh, a lot of symptoms, a lot of symptoms that we would tie to kind of a, a classic hypothyroid situation. Um, they had sought out, you know, care from their provider, have been struggling for years with these symptoms. Um, they did some thyroid testing and her thyroid antibodies were really, really elevated. However, her TSH, her thyroid stimulating hormone was within normal range by conventional standards. And you know, he basically, uh, this provider told the client that, um, you know, they, that she was probably going to need medication in a few years and that they would just kind of sit and check in on it and wait until that time came. This client, this potential client asked the provider, um, some questions. She had been doing some research on her own and asked, uh, specifically if she could do anything with nutrition, lifestyle, to uh, lower her thyroid antibodies or to support her thyroid and if there was anything that she should do with modifying gluten intake because she had read some things about gluten and, um, you know, anti uh, antibodies, uh, thyroid antibodies. And this provider said, um, there is nothing you can do to lower your antibodies. Uh, nutrition has no impact on your thyroid. We just need to sit and wait until, you know, medication is appropriate. Wow. Just wow. How one, how disempowering for this client, but also just very, very wrong. And like, you know, to Abby's point, it just bad medicine. And, um, you know, Abby and I do not like to, you know, uh, pin anyone against, you know, conventional medicine or, or any, you know, kind of, uh, healthcare approach. I think there's so many different approaches that are important and needed, but, um, dismissing, you know, these things to clients, you're, this is actually, um, preventing an individual from having the opportunity to take her health into her, her own hands and to get well. And we are not okay with that. So um, these these things are very, very frustrating. Um, and, you know, just because this provider wasn't, uh, you know, well-trained in nutrition and lifestyle doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, <laughs> you know, for for the thyroid. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like a case of like ego in medicine of, you know, if they don't know it, doesn't exist. And for that person, like when we can, can identify that dynamics are present and, you know, we're seeing some antibodies, but we're not yet seeing like frank damage to the actual organ itself. You're like, that's a beautiful time to have caught the white flag. As we usually say, before it becomes the red flag, you're like, we can actually do like true reversal 
and like massive change in someone's health, in particular when we catch it in those like early moments. And this is where like we get on, you know, our our soapbox about like prevention is really how we can truly U-turn away from diagnosed conditions. But it's so challenging when someone's getting the, that type of information of like, let's just see and let's just wait until like your body continues these simmering dynamics that because there's always a root cause. Like your body's not just like, I decided to hate you and now I'm going to just attack your thyroid. Like that's just not how the body works. There's a reason. Exactly. You know, and, and we need to be a detective to find the reason or else it's just going to continue happening. And knowing that there are so many things that that individual and all individuals like can do in their day to day life. Oh, blood boiling moment. <laughs> I know. I know. And it's like, it, it, I mean, I feel like this is happening with so many different health dynamics, but, you know, in thinking about, um, you know, the, the irritable bowel disease example and saying that nutrition doesn't matter when like our entire di like digestive tract and like the purpose of, uh, you know, what it does in breaking down and digesting and absorbing nutrients from food. Like, what do you mean that, you know, nutrition doesn't matter or the thyroid being a heavily nutrient, uh, and energy dependent, you know, uh, gland. It's just, it, it's mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel the same. And, and, you know, we're not here to totally discredit kind of conventional medicine, because there are areas that like conventional medicine is important for healing. So, you know, this isn't an exhaustive list, but we can think of like, if you have a, if you have a broken leg or broken bone, if you're needing like emergency medicine to save a life in seconds, like that is conventional medicine, routine screenings for cancer. Um, if you need surgery, you know, we do always want to kind of little caveat of, uh, hopefully someone on your healthcare team is asking why the surgery might be needed in the first place. Removing an organ or a tumor or things doesn't stop the underlying cause or reason for why that developed in the first place. And certainly your surgeon, they're only trained to cut. They're not there to ask, you know, why you got there in the first place. So, you know, there are absolute things that conventional medicine is really supportive and helpful around. But it also does kind of lead into the conversation that, you know, we've been having of like, where does conventional medicine go wrong? And this is where we see conventional medicine as like siloed medicine, meaning each specialty is really concerned about their own focus. Cardiovascular is only thinking about the heart and the blood vessels. The GI is only thinking about the formal gut organs. The endocrinologist is only thinking about hormones. And none of them are connecting how each system might be impacting the other or certainly how the environment and the choices that this individual is making from nutrition and lifestyle are maybe impacting the holistic whole body and all of those individual systems. And so to kind of build on our like kind of individual with this like thyroid dynamic, we can think of a perfect example, which I'm sure, you know, many of our listeners can kind of identify with this. Like if we have, if we're a woman with elevated cholesterol, constipation, and autoimmune thyroid, this woman might be seeing all three of these specialists who are focusing on each symptom or, you know, elevated blood marker that pertains to their specialty, but rarely is anyone helping her to connect how these symptoms are related how they might be supported by nutrition and lifestyle practices, even in addition to the medications that she's likely already been prescribed. So, you know, conventional medicine often has a reactive Band-Aid approach that addresses any symptom and every symptom with medication. It's either we ignore the symptoms and we tell you, well, your, your tests look normal. So you're the epitome of health, even though you're telling me this laundry list of symptoms. We're either, we either see that they're ignored or they're medicated. Those are kind of the, the two that, you know, we're not making these up. These are just the things that we see. So for this, you know, individual that we're given the example of like high cholesterol, they're going to put you on a statin, constipation, you're going to use some Marilax, autoimmune thyroid, potentially thyroid medication or wait and see. And not, you know, this woman doesn't have a deficiency in medication. That's what she likely needs is more of education and support about her body's stress response and nutrient deficiencies that might be exacerbating or driving the symptoms and how to utilize these foundational lifestyles. She might even find that these tools can reduce or eliminate one or more of the medications. And as Julie said in the beginning, like we're not anti-medication, but 
we are much more about un- identifying the underlying dynamics that continue to cause these challenges. And that's really what we're seeing, that conventional medicine has the desire to really identify only one thing that's going wrong in the body. And that they need this formal diagnosis that labels the person and aligns with a medication for treatment. But unfortunately, we are not robots that only have one loose screw. We are complex, holistic bodies that are intricately connected and are more comprised of our daily habits and practices than anything else, especially in our modern 21st century world. We are seeing this true time and time again. And this is the concept and belief that really separates conventional medicine from functional medicine. And Jilly's going to dive us into a little bit more about what is functional medicine? Yeah, let's let's dive in and kind of define functional medicine. Um, obviously, a- Abby and I are uh, very passionate about functional medicine, um, and I think it's you know gained some popularity, which is wonderful. A lot, lot more people are talking about it. But let's talk about you know what what it actually is. So, functional medicine is defined as a systems biology approach that focuses on identifying and addressing the root causes of disease or of symptoms. Um, So when we say a systems biology approach, essentially that means that we are not looking at the body in that siloed way that, you know, Abby just described, and we are really considering and assessing the interconnectedness of all of the different systems and organs in the body and how they interact. Um, All of these things are so, so um, connected in the body. The functional medicine model is really an individualized, uh, patient-centered, evidence-based approach. Um, It involves a deep understanding of an individual's genetic, uh, biochemical, nutrition, lifestyle factors, along with leveraging a variety of different uh, lab data for the customization and personalization of treatment plans. For example, to kind of, um, you know, put it in a very black and white way um, in terms of thinking about uh, a conventional versus functional approach If someone is diagnosed with depression, the conventional approach for treatment most often involves a singular focus on antidepressant medication. Someone is offered an antidepressant. A functional medicine approach for depression would involve a much deeper assessment that evaluated things like gut health, thyroid function, blood sugar balance, nutrient status, genetics, lifestyle habits like sleep, light exposure, exercise, along with considering the different triggers potentially involved, um, you know, and potentially medication, um, if that's, you know, appropriate for the individual. But um, just to, to highlight that something like, you know, depression, you know, treated in this very siloed way, we're ignoring all of the things that we know in terms of gut health, thyroid health that, you know, that we know um, can actually drive depression or, you know, amplify, you know, depression and other mood disorders. Again, we are not not anti-medication here, but medication is just one piece of the puzzle. And we feel strongly that um, people really deserve to have options and the opportunity to uh, kind of choose uh, what makes the most sense for them. So ultimately, functional medicine is the practice of understanding and, and addressing those underlying dynamics that are creating dysfunction, that are driving symptoms in the body versus just treating the symptom. In practice, Abby and I see day in and day out how profound this functional medicine approach is with clients. Um, If you haven't listened to both of our own personal stories uh, in a previous podcast episode um, in season one, you will learn that Abby and I were tossed around by the conventional healthcare system too. And um, we experienced a lot of this firsthand, which is what drove us to uh, seek out deeper training in functional medicine and to support uh, clients and, and, you know, the masses in a different way. Um, And we are seeing in practice, uh, you know, just how profound this work is and the incredible impact that nutrition, lifestyle, and supplementation alone um, can often have on health. So, To put it more specifically, we are commonly seeing in our work with clients um, long, long time eczema completely clearing up, cystic acne completely clearing up, food sensitivities being fully eliminated, chronic constipation being fully eliminated, um, women achieving regular symptom free cycles that, you know, were previously having debilitating, you know, periods and taking days off of work. 
um, people getting pregnant naturally after being told that IVF was their only option, anxiety and mood issues uh, stabilizing. So just really, really profound. Um, you know, the, the things that we are seeing improve for people day in and day out in practice when they have this, you know, kind of personalized support. And we wanted to kind of share just a couple specific client examples with you to really highlight the opportunity, you know, for you here and just to kind of like hear a little bit more, um, you know, with the, the work that we're doing and what we're seeing. Um, do you want to give a, an example, Abby, of a, a client story that comes to mind? Yeah. So uh, I had a client who um, she was struggling with chronic nausea, chronic constipation, chronic distension. Um, She had had kind of every uh, scope test, liver test, kind of uh, ultrasound, like everything to look at, you know, why is she struggling with these chronic symptoms? Wasn't really getting full relief from any of her symptoms based on, you know, the Miralax that she was being um, told to take, some of the laxatives that she was utilizing for regular bowel movements. She also was struggling with chronic fatigue um, as in kind of conjunction with all of these other symptoms. And when we started working together and, you know, really asking like, are, are people asking, you know, does anyone, has anyone asked you what you're, what you are eating or when you're eating or, you know, are you getting you know, light exposure? What's your, your movement like? And starting to really ask these questions, the answer was no, no one was really asking these in the first place. Um, but really understanding that, you know, some of her major dynamics were, there wasn't a consistency to her lifestyle. So when we think of, you know, regularity in like bowel movements and patterning in the body, She really didn't have an appetite because when you're constant, you're chronically constipated, you're nauseous from the moment you wake up and, you know, you're distended, like understandable that she's like, I'm not thrilled about eating. So I go hours and hours and hours without eating, which then kind of generated a stress response, which then was leading to the fatigue and just very um, kind of an upside down in her lifestyle really through, you know, functional testing and listening to her symptoms, you know, chronic nausea, a lot of the time really would suggest like, is there something in her kind of bio liver pathway that we need some support, especially waking up with that chronic nausea and the constipation, that lack of motility and with supporting kind of more support to her kind of liver and her bile pathways and starting to help her to get more natural light in the morning and kind of create consistency in her routines and actually feed her gut um, feed her body more and kind of create, you know, gentle, um, support in terms of meals at first and starting to build that natural appetite that we were able to clear her nausea within a week. We were able to kind of get her eating like mini meals and that eventually turned into full meals. We were using a light box for light exposure to help with her cortisol patterns. And then she eventually started taking walks in the morning because she was feeling so good and started to really just believe in that her body has this healing capacity. And we were able to completely reverse every single one of the symptoms that she was struggling with. And she hadn't been given a diagnosis because they didn't find anything on testing. They were like, yeah, I know we hear you struggling, but like everything looks good. And she was just sent on her way. And now she is, you know, thriving and living her full life. And she's not chronic constipated. She's not chronically nauseous, which I hate being nauseous. So I feel that so much for so many clients. Like she can, she can actually participate as like a full human in her life. And we really did that through nutrition, through lifestyle, functional testing, guidance, and, and customized supplements. So, so incredibly powerful and a very kind of common story, right? For, pe- for people in our, our practices that, um, you know, have struggled and fallen through the cracks and, um, you know, through the functional medicine work, you know, we can really put the pieces together. And um, it's just so cool how she really like regained, you know, trust in her body and uh, just a, an amazing story. And, you know, I'm, I'm certain that's going to resonate with uh, many of our listeners that have been struggling with these various kind of types of symptoms. Yeah. And I think it's important too, just one last piece to share, like that was over the course of six months. 
So, you know, I think sometimes when we hear these like rags to riches type of story, it's like, oh my gosh, so that should happen in like a month, right? And it's like, you know, we do want wins along the way, like able to, you know, clear her nausea in, in under a week was, you know, amazing and a huge piece of, um, you know, understanding, okay, we're on the right track because her body's positively responding. And that's, you know, the expert guidance that we provide to, you know, our clients in both our private practice and our, and our programs. Um, but also then it was like her work and her consistency and her dedication to, you know, her own health. And, you know, through six months, we were really get to get her to that place. So to contribute a, a story from a client that comes to mind for me in my one-on-one -on -one practice, um, there was a, a woman that I have uh, worked with. And I want to preface this too by saying that, um, you know, we did not work together for, you know, a month, two months. Um, this was really over the course of like a year and a half um, where, you know, the, the uh, healing work was happening. But um, this client came to me and um, had been struggling for a decade or more with a, a whole slew of symptoms. Um, and she did have various, uh, you know, kind of medical conditions that were actually diagnosed in terms of um, SIBO, uh, mast cell uh, disorder, mast cell syndrome. Um, she had really miserable periods and was put on continuous hormonal birth control to kind of shut off the hormones, um, suffered with brain fog, eczema, um, was basically eating air because everything made her so bloated and distended. And she had been told to go on so many different elimination diets, long-term FODMAP. Um, and she was incredibly just stressed, confused, symptomatic. Um, prior to starting our work together, she had mentioned that, um, she was actually looking into getting a service animal because, uh, she was really struggling, um, like physically to, you know, kind of get around and do day-to-day -day life activities. And this is someone who is, is in, you know, their thirties, you know, and, and, um, should really not be the case. So, um, we started working together and doing some, uh, deeper investigative work and uncovered, um, that she had some significant mold exposure. Um, we did hormone testing, gut testing, um, learned a lot from these things and really started to kind of put some things in action started with the fundamentals, you know, supporting digestion, getting her eating more, balancing blood sugar, uh, working on her, her circadian rhythm, supporting the liver, the gallbladder detoxification, um, heavily supporting the nervous system, you know, and then diving into deeper interventions in terms of what was coming up on these tests and supporting the um, mold exposure or the mycotoxin illness piece of, of things. Um, so, and actually I should, I want to mention too, because I think this is just so, so profound. When this client came to me, she was on a true laundry list of uh, medications. So this is like the perfect example of what I meant by, you know, someone's health being treated like a game of whack-a-mole. Passed around from provider to provider, um, told to take this, that, and the other thing to suppress symptoms. So when she came to me, she was on um, uh, citalopram, uh, midadrine, mestinin, metoprolol, uh, continuous birth control, Cymbalta, Linzess, Chromalin Sodium, Zyrtec, and Pepsid on all of these things. And she was miserable. Um, throughout our work together, you know, over a, a very, very extended period of time and driven by her and her desire to not need all of these medications as she was feeling better and with, you know, uh, uh, permission and collaboration from her uh, prescribing health care providers, um, she started to taper off of these medications. And within about a year or, or a little more, she was able to transition off of every single one of these medications besides one that she is in the process of coming off of currently. Um, so she went from a list of like 10 medications that she was on um, and being very ill still with those to getting her life back, no longer needing those medications and, um, being able to actually, um, thrive and exercise and, you know, dance and cook and eat at friends' houses and like show up fully in life. Um, so that, you know, this is definitely a, an, an extreme example, but it's, it's, you know, it's something that people really, uh, getting lost in our, our healthcare system. Um, and, you know, this client put in the work and, you know, has really gotten her life back, which is really amazing. But had she not uh, kind of tried to pursue other avenues, I, you know, it breaks my heart thinking what life would look like for her right now. I mean, it's that like type of story that, I mean, I have goosebumps and, and you've told that to me before. This is not the first time I've heard, you know, that 
that story or certainly had stories like that. And, but it's like every single time it's like, that is, you know, one person who literally got their life back. Which is the point of all of this at the end of the day, right? It's, you know, not about being a like perfect eater or perfect this or that. It's really about being able to show up fully um, and, you know, en- enjoy the the one life that we have without being preoccupied by, you know, symptoms and not feeling well, which just stinks. So um, just, you know, wanted to highlight those those client stories to share with you that there is so much opportunity here if you are currently struggling and you feel like, you know, you, you haven't found answers yet. So in talking about functional medicine and, you know, how powerful this work can be, I do also think it's important to highlight where functional medicine goes wrong. And we are also seeing, you know, lots of, um, you know, problems with functional medicine as well, just like there's pros and cons with conventional medicine. So as powerful as functional, functional medicine is, we are, um, seeing some issues. One of the biggest issues being that we, uh, see, kind of conventional uh, medicine approaches in terms of that symptom suppression or like symptom management focus only happening in functional medicine, but it's, you know, it's supplement. So it's natural, right? Um, So we have a lot of potential clients come to us that have worked with um, functional providers, holistic providers that have, you know, run a lot of extensive testing that is not um, inexpensive and, you know, recommended lots of, um, you know, supplements and people are not getting better. Um, and you know, this kind of speaks to the overlooking of the fundamentals that Abby and I, you know, covered so extensively, extensively in season one, where, you know, you can't, you can't out supplement, uh, you know, a, a poor diet, a dysregulated nervous system, a disrupted circadian rhythm. Um, you know, Abby and I have said a lot that supplements are kind of the cherry on top. Um, they're a piece of the puzzle. They're a tool that can be really impactful with moving the needle, um, but not not in the absence of, you know, doing that fundamental work with your nutrition and lifestyle. Um, so if you are seeking out support from a functional medicine provider and, you know, the first thing that they are doing is recommending, you know, uh, supplements and they're not asking you about sleep and talking about blood sugar and asking about protein intake and, you know, these core things that are so important that that is a a major red flag. Um, so, you know, that's something that we are seeing often. Um, we're seeing also a lot of the, uh, a lot of therapeutic elimination diets being, overused and actually just really abused. So another thing, um, it's like we have potential clients come to us that again, are like, they're eating nothing. They've been told to cut so much out that they are very stressed. They have no idea what to eat. Everything makes them feel sick. They're scared of food. And, you know, they're just, um, being pulled farther and farther away from their cell themselves and their own innate wisdom. And they're also being pulled farther away from health. So another thing that we always say is if um, any provider recommends an elimination diet as like the first line of intervention, that is a massive red flag. Um, Elimination diets are not um, a root cause solution. Um, They can be warranted in certain situations, but they should be used cautiously. Um, And we should always make sure that people have the fundamentals in place first. If someone already is not, you know, eating enough and meal timing's erratic and um, their diet is limited, how is it going to help if we're telling them to then cut out even more and more foods? It's not, that's, that's the answer. (laughs) So, um, so that's another thing. And then, um, yeah, I think all of this really just speaks to, I think there's like, um, with functional medicine, uh, there's a lot of attraction with the shiny things, right? The supplements and the testing, which again are very valuable. Um, but we have to focus on the fundamentals first and make sure that, um, all of those things are in place. And I, I think too, like when you work with a provider who is listening to to you, like you feel it. So like allowing that like intuitive piece of like, you know, that connecting with that, that human that's part of your healthcare team and asking yourself, like, does this person feel like they're working with, with me and like my uniqueness and validating, you know, the symptoms that I'm experiencing and looking at the labs and like, you know, kind of taking all of me into account and we can feel the difference in that. So it's like, even for, you know, our own selves, like it can be tempting to say like, Ooh, all these shiny bells and whistles, like these must be the things that are going to like get me to the finish line. Cause nothing else has worked. And, you know, if they're, 
if they're not asking you like continuously, like, so what are you eating? How are you sleeping? Like those, those foundations and like really listening to like, again, you as a human, that's, you know, that's where we really need to be like treating the human in front of us. And you need to feel that as an individual of like, wow, this person's like really on my side. And even if, you know, maybe we're still hitting some challenges in your, um, healing as if they feel like a teammate and they feel like they're really a part of it, then, you know, I mean, bumps do come up along all journeys. Um, it's not, you know, certainly even the stories that we shared, like it wasn't just like, great. We just like seamlessly like slid right into like optimal health. Like, no, there was definitely like sticky situations and whatnot, but it's like part of our job to say like, Hey, like, all right, we're, you know, we're troubleshooting, we're navigating, we're validating your body as like our, um, you you are the, you are the expert in your own body. And we recognize that and that you should feel that in your provider. Absolutely. And, um, to, to kind of just build off what Abby mentioned about you know, the, the healing journey, there are always bumps, you know, the healing journeys are very nonlinear. Um, but I think when you're covering the foundations, you're being super methodical in how, you know, you work through things and there is that partnership and that collaboration. It's like, okay, there's a bump, but you know, we have these things in place and we know that we need to give the body time or we need to observe what's happening here. Um, so it's, it's, you know, a, a different kind of scenario, I think when, there is that partnership with a practitioner and, you know, when you're moving, moving through things methodically and you're not just treating a, a test, uh, you know, you're, you're treating the actual person. So, um, so yeah, I just, it's, you know, again, functional medicine is, um, is a really powerful tool, but, um, it's, you know, there's problems with functional medicine, just like there is with, with conventional medicine. And we'd be doing a disservice to you if we didn't, you know, share that as well. So, um, the other thing that we actually want to point out in terms of, you know, what's going on with functional medicine is that there is often, um, you know, concern around the financial investment in terms of working with uh, functional providers, you know, like uh, Abby and myself. So there's a little bit of a resistance in terms of, well, this is, you know, this is expensive and my, you know, maybe my insurance doesn't cover this. And we want to speak to that a little bit. So first of all, most functional medicine practitioners are private pay, not all, but most, because it is very challenging to practice functional medicine effectively within our current healthcare system and our current insurance model specifically. I can speak to this because I used to work as an outpatient uh, dietitian in endocrinology at a big uh, Boston hospital. And my experience there was a big piece of what uh, motivated me to, you know, start my own practice. And I initially really wanted to make, you know, functional medicine tools and my approach accessible. So I accepted insurance early on in practice. And I was like, I am changing the world. And it was really, really tough. I burned the heck out of myself, um, you know, with trying to deal with insurance and, um, you know, it's, it's a lot about volume, right? So insurance reimburses for the num, you know, the number of visits a practitioner has, the number of, you know, um, procedures and medications. And, you know, our healthcare system, unfortunately, makes money off of people being sick, requiring the procedures and the medications and things like that. And again, it doesn't mean that these things are, are never necessary, um, but there isn't an incentive. Um, you know, insurance doesn't make money from people being healthy. They don't make money from preventative care and people not needing these things anymore. So it is tough um, to you know, kind of practice, you know, functional medicine and that root cause approach within our, our current healthcare system. Um, and you know, a lot of the, uh, uh, lifestyle and, and, um, nutrition services, I do think this is getting a little bit better and people can use HSAs and FSAs and there's a little bit more flexibility, flexibility, but, uh, nutritional lifestyle services, preventative services are sometimes not covered or they're just like really poorly covered. Mm -hmm. Um, and as a nutrition professional in, you know, when I worked in the hospital, we didn't make big bucks for the hospital like surgeons did. So, um, so yeah, just to kind of call that out a little bit and, you know, Babby and I will be honest that when we do work with one-on-one -on -one clients, it is a financial investment. It's a time investment, a commitment. Um, but within the containers we create, this is how we are able to really get people healthy. Um, but alongside that, uh, you know, we don't, 
want these, these things to be inaccessible. And not everyone needs that high level of one-on-one support and high level of personalization. And that is why both Abby and I have created um, incredibly uh, accessible group programs that are super comprehensive and take our entire approach with, you know, one-on-one clients and kind of disseminate it into, um, you know, this group program format where things are a bit more self-paced and there's a community focus. Um, so I have, uh, the empowered PCOS group program, which is a 12 week group coaching program for women. Um, Abby, do you want to share your program just so people know too? Yeah, I have the no drama digestion program. We lovingly call it NDD. And it's a six month program to eliminate the root causes of digestive symptoms and heal gut health. Yeah. And it's, you know, these, these programs are, um, you know, they're more affordable, but they're, they're again, it doesn't, you know, they're not maybe appropriate for everyone in terms of, um, you know, what their needs are, but for so many people that we work with, it's exactly what they need, um, at a much lower price. And it gets them to that place of, you know, symptom resolution and, you know, being able to kind of regain trust in their body and to, to live their life, which is cool. Um, this podcast, you know, for example, we put a ton into each episode of this podcast. Season one alone, if you are to kind of work through that and probably even re-listen to um, some of those fundamental episodes and start to kind of slowly implement things, you may notice um, some pretty massive transformations with your health and how you feel. Um, Both of us are super active on social media and, you know, share uh, tons of free, completely free, you know, information, advice, practical tips, things that you can get started with today. So if there is a you know, financial barrier there. Um, you know, we have options and we are going to continue to to create options and to, um, you know, show up on this podcast and, you know, give you the opportunity to, um, transform your health. So all of that to say, there are a lot of options. Um, and you know, if you need a very, very high level of support, there's a lot of complexities. Um, you know, you can still start work on the fundamentals because that's going to be important uh, no matter what. And maybe it's something that, you know, is in the budget down the line, or maybe you find that it's not necessary after you kind of work through all, all the fundamentals, which is cool. And both Jilly and myself offer kind of complimentary calls um, to, you know, talk with us about the the programs and our practice and to help guide you in, you know, what would be the best fit for you. And, and our ultimate goal is to align our clients into what is going to be appropriate for them. Um, so, you know, we will, we'll be honest with you of like, whether, you know, the program or a, a kind of one-on-one support is like what we really think is necessary to, to get you the result that you're looking for. Cause your result is also our greatest goal. In an ideal world, you know, what we're kind of dreaming up is this fusion between conventional and functional medicine where it's no longer this, this versus that, but more of this like Venn diagram, or as I was saying, a poo-poo platter, (laughs) which, (laughs) which when I offered that when we were drafting up this podcast. Jilly knows what a poo-poo platter is. <laughs> we we paused for a second. We're like, do other people know what a poo-poo platter is? So like question for you all, do we know what a poo-poo platter is? <laughs> it's We used to order them when we were younger uh, in my family at, when we'd go out to like Chinese food and you'd get like a whole assortment of like all these like really delicious, amazing things. And they call it a poo-poo platter. So the idea- the best, best name ever and like so appropriate. Um <laughs> But like that's when, when to Abby said that in our little, when we were prepping for this, I was like, you must bring up the poo-poo platter in the actual recording. <laughs> Probably like more concerning was that I like said it and then like didn't hesitate. You were like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> let's, let's go back to the poo-poo platter thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, is that abnormal? Is that odd yeah. to say? <laughs> but so the idea that, you know, we can choose what's going to be most appropriate for us, this, this idea of um, bringing those two modalities together. And, and, you know, the primary care would would hopefully be that resource that would understand both the strengths and the weaknesses of both of those modalities. So, you know, providers who are regularly asking you, like, what are you eating? How are you sleeping? How are you pooping? Um, are you ready, regularly getting movement, getting fresh air? 
you know, insurance rewarding providers for healthy patients and utilizing lab testing to prevent health challenges, not just during times of crisis. Providers who are not extensively trained in medical nutrition therapy feeling comfortable to say that, you know, maybe that's outside of their scope and they'll connect you with a resource who is an expert in nutrition and lifestyle, like a functional dietitian, and be that teammate to help you get the resources that you need. And ultimately, really coming down to this idea of informed consent, talking to clients about all of the options that they have in exploring the navigating through health challenges. So the nutrition, the lifestyle, the supplements, the medications, and then allowing that individual to choose and advocate for themselves. And, you know, if they advocate to say, Hey, I, you know, I'd really just like to address it with a medication. That's their choice. Or I'd like to take six months and explore what I can do with nutrition and lifestyle and, and maybe get some guidance around, you know, utilizing supplements and, and seeing where I get to. And then maybe I'll come back in six months if I haven't gotten any traction and, and we'll, we'll explore your treatment plan with the medication or, you know, what have you. So that idea of having someone walk you through, what are all the possibilities? And then together guiding to say, you know, let's, let's help to provide guidance. I I love that so much. And it's, it's really like my, my biggest beef I would say is like the lack of informed consent. And, um, there is no judgment ever around what you decide, you know, you have the autonomy to make decisions that feel good for you. And there should never be any judgment from any provider on your, your healthcare team. We just want you to have all the options and all of the information to make, you know, those informed decisions and, you know, those empowered decisions really, um, to kind of, you know, wrap, wrap all of this up. Um, you know, want to leave you with a, a few thoughts, uh, to kind of pull all of this together. So, Ultimately, we want you to be able to advocate for yourself and to find appropriate support from someone who you actually like to work with um, and that you feel supported by. Someone that will listen to you and collaborate with you to really deeply investigate what's going on. Working with a provider on your health should be a collaborative partnership. Um, you deserve uh, to be listened to um, you know, with an open mind and you should never feel shame, judgment, um, you know, any of those things. If you do not feel supported by your healthcare provider currently and it's not a good fit, you can always change. You can always find a new provider. Um, so that's a that's a really important one. And I think sometimes we have to remind, you know, clients of that, that, you know, your your provider works for you. Um, and if it's not a good fit, that's okay. We can move on and find someone else. A um, couple other points. Every single health condition and symptom is driven or impacted by nutrition and lifestyle in some way. Every single condition. This does not mean that, you know, medication is not appropriate um, or, you know, we've said that a million times, but I think it's important to drive home, um, you know, that conventional medicine has a place. But diet and lifestyle are absolutely foundational and should always, always be supported and discussed in any conversation around any health dynamic. If someone is telling you otherwise or saying that nutrition, you know, or lifestyle doesn't matter in a certain circumstance, this is a massive, massive red flag and you deserve better. Remember, you are the CEO of your own health. If your body is telling you that something is off, we need to listen and we need to trust our intuition, even if you know you are being told that everything's fine. If you don't feel supported by your current provider, explore other options and continue to advocate for what you need. So you deserve to feel fully supported and listened to by your healthcare team. You deserve to have a toolkit for supporting your health, a diverse toolkit. A poo-poo platter. A poo-poo platter toolkit. <laughs> <laughs> and you deserve to understand your body. And we hope that this episode brings some enlightenment of various ways that you can navigate creating a healthcare team that's going to feel just that for yourself. 